Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. I just gave a talk in San Francisco at the AI Engineer World's Fair 2025. And I just came home and decided I need to record the talk again for you because I want you to see it too. Okay, so let's design like Carpathia is watching. What does that even mean? So as you know, I'm Zeke, Zeke on GitHub, Zeke on X, and I work for Replicate. Replicate is a platform for running AI with an API. If you're a software engineer, Replicate makes it really easy for you to incorporate AI technologies into your applications. So you can run open source models like Black Forest Labs Flux, as well as proprietary models like Anthropic Cloud, OpenAI GPT, Google's image generation models, video generation models, etc. And of course, you can also publish your own custom models, which can be public or private. But more importantly, who is Andre Karpathy? So Andre is an AI researcher who's worked at some really big companies like Google, OpenAI, Tesla, and OpenAI. Um, but most importantly to me, he is a YouTube educator who makes some really high quality, extremely accessible videos about the underlying technology behind uh, machine learning and AI. Um, so you may know him because he coined the term vibe coding, which has become extremely popular lately. Um, and I share his hot take that the hottest new programming language is English or natural language. Um, also, Andre wrote this thing called Software 2.0, which was a really famous blog post, uh, which remarkably was now seven years ago in which he predicted that AI models would be better at writing software than humans and that we'd see a huge shift in the industry. And here we are experiencing that shift today. Also, Andre is an angel investor in Replicate. So he's watching us. Um, so I want to talk about MenuGen. What is MenuGen? MenuGen is an app that Andre vibe coded uh, last month. And it's basically a simple web app that allows you to take photos of textual restaurant menus and convert them into images representing the food on that menu. So this is useful if you're at a fancy restaurant and you don't know what the ingredients mean or if you are a, if English is not your native language and you wanna be able to get a sense of what's available on the menu and you're not sure what those things mean. So Andre started building this app using a vibe coding approach, meaning he just jumped into an editor, started giving it natural language prompts and letting it write the code without having too much control or even understanding of how the code worked. So Andre said, vibe coding menu gen was exhilarating and a fun escapade as a local demo, but a bit of a painful slog as a deployed real app. And that's what I wanna dig into here. So he said, here is where some of the trouble started with OpenAI, Replicate, Vercel, Clerk, Stripe, et cetera. So these are some of the products that he used to build MenuGen. So this is kind of a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it's really exciting to be mentioned among all these really well-respected tech companies and these really like significant brands in the era of AI. But at the same time, Andre was also raking us all over the coals with some very valid and uh, specific feedback about the shortcomings of these products or the, the friction that he encountered along the way. So here's the part about Replicate. He jumped in, he created a new API key. The LLM knowledge was deprecated. Our docs were out of date. He encountered rate limiting issues and it was hard to get started with a legitimate account even though he was punking down his credit card. So I wanted to dig into what happened here um, and some of the changes we're making at Replicate to help make this a better experience for Vibe coders and regular coders in the future. So what can Replicate do better? One thing we can do is embrace LLMs.txt. The basic idea behind LLMs.txt is you should expose your web pages on your website or with your API as um, plain text markdown documents that can be consumed more readily by language models rather than HTML pages with lots of markup and sort of visual human specific 
content and buttons and links. So Andre says, tired is elaborate docs pages with fancy color palettes, branding, etc. Wired is one single docs.md file and a copy to clipboard button. So recently on Replicate, we added a new button to every single model page that lets you copy the content of that page as markdown or take the page and link it to Claude where you can actually provide Claude with the URL of the page, the model page, and then have an interaction with it. Similarly, you can also open a model page in ChatGPT and ChatGPT consumes the LLMs.txt content for that page and summarizes it for you and you can now have a conversation with it. So it's basically a way to have an interactive, dynamic dialogue with any model on Replicate. Also, you can just grab the raw markdown LLMs.txt file, which has all of the model inputs, the schemas, the description, etc. So you can plug this into your editor like Cursor or Windsurf or uh, Visual Studio Code with Copilot. So next thing, Andre says LLMs don't like to click, they like to curl. So what is curl? Curl is this old school command for running HTTP commands, an old school command line tool. So curl is available ubiquitously. It's on Linux systems. It's on Windows systems with WSL. It's on Mac OS. Everyone has curl and it's here to stay. So let's dig in a little bit about what makes curl so useful. So here's an example snippet um, for creating a prediction on Replicate using the API. So what's amazing here is that when a language model consumes this content, this has everything that it needs to know. It has uh, the HTTP method, the JSON payload that is expected, the mechanism for providing an API key, uh, the type of um, content that you're expecting, whether or not you want the request to be asynchronous or synchronous, and of course, the endpoint itself. So just by consuming this little bit of text, which is maybe a little bit unsavory to a human or a little bit kind of full of syntax, um, LLMs can actually, this is enough for an LLM to know how to interact with your API and even transform this kind of request into other languages. So we have a tool called COG at COG.run, which is an open source project for packaging machine learning models in Docker containers with a standardized API. So we took all of COG's documentation and put it into an LLMs.txt file. What this means is you can go in your editor on an existing COG model and drop into your AI agent mode and just provide this URL to the agent and it'll be able to read the entire documentation page for all of COG and use it to make informed changes to this code base. So you can actually open up an existing COG model that maybe you didn't even write and someone else on Replicate wrote, feed in the COG docs and actually make working changes based on the official documentation. So it's pretty powerful. Uh, the next thing Andre said was the primary audience of your thing, your product, service, library, etc., is now an LLM, not a human. So this brings me to MCP. Unless you've been living under a rock for the last couple of weeks or months, you've probably now heard of MCP. Maybe you know what it is, maybe you don't. Um, I think it's gonna be a big deal. I think it already is a big deal, but it's gonna be an even bigger deal. So let's dig into it and talk about what it is and how useful it is. So at Replicate, we use an open API schema to define our HTTP API. So this is basically a giant JSON file that describes all of our public APIs. So what are the HTTP methods that you use to create predictions, to collect predictions, to search, to run models, to create deployments, all this sort of thing. And all sort of encoded in a standardized JSON format. So that's open, a open API. We use the open API schema to generate all of our HTTP reference documentation for humans. So when you go to the docs website, 
you're looking at a page that was generated from that schema that has every single endpoint and all of the required query parameters, body parameters, headers, etc., that are required to run those. So this is where MCP comes in. We basically take MCP is a process of just taking an open API schema and feeding it to a language model so that the language model knows how to perform all those operations. So at Replicate, we built an MCP server and you can use it with tools like Claude. So what you see on my screen here is a tiny little bit of JSON that you add to your Claude desktop configuration. Um, and all you need to do is put an API token in and this little bit of JSON and Claude will now know all of Replicate's API endpoints, all of their parameters and how to run them. And not only, to, not only as documentation, but it can actually run them in the Claude desktop app. So let's switch over to Claude here after I've installed the Replicate MCP server. And now I can have a conversation with Claude where I can give it files or URLs and I can ask it to help perform operations using Replicate's API. So this is what, this is what MCP is unlocking for us. So Claude is now using Replicate's API to conduct a search using our public models endpoint to find various models that can be used to upscale images. So here I'm telling Claude which model we actually want to use to restore my image. It's making an API call, it's uploading an image, and it is polling for the response. And by the end of it, Claude now has run the model for me on my behalf using my API token. So you can imagine all the sort of use cases that are going to be unlocked by this. So people now have the ability to discover products um, and discover all of the capabilities of products by feeding data about tools into tools like Claude or OpenAI, ChatGPT, um, and being able to ask questions about those products. So pretty powerful stuff. So here are the lessons that I learned or the sort of takeaways that I got from this experience of reading about uh, Andre's um, friction that he encountered while using Replicate. So first of all, accept payments. This one seems really obvious, right? Um, the, the problem here is that when Andre started um, using Replicate, he made a bunch of API requests in quick succession and it triggered some kind of abuse mechanism on our side that said, oh, this user's only been on the platform for an hour and they've already made too many API requests. And so that was a protection that we put in place to prevent fraud. But in this particular case, it was a power user who had provided their credit card and was willing to pay. So one of the things we need to do is improve our processes around letting legitimate users get onto the platform and quickly start making as many API requests as they want. One of the ways we can solve this is by letting users pre-purchase credit. So you've probably ex experienced this if you used OpenAI or Anthropic over the last year or two. They've switched over to prepaid credits as their preferred method of payment, and it's for this exact reason. Next, document your shit. So if you're building a product, you basically just need to, every time you make a change or an improvement to the product, don't just ship pull requests. Also write documentation that can fall into the hands of users and fall into the mouths of LLMs. Otherwise, if there's no docs, it didn't happen. Uh, next, feed the machines. That means take your data, put it into structured formats, put it into markdown, put it into schemas, formats that LLMs can ingest and use. Also, use boring technology. What do I mean by that? Use technology that has been around for a long time and doesn't change all the time. Because when you do that, the language model is going to have a much better chance of being able to successfully write code or use those tools because they are so established and well-documented in the sort of internet corpus that was used to train the model in the first place. So avoid using 
shiny, shiny new technologies that, changes, that change frequently and are not well understood by LLMs. Uh, lastly, practice good API hygiene. So if you know that your API is largely going to be consumed by language models in the future, make sure that you are conscious of things like the size of the context window of the user who might be consuming your data. So in the past where we thought it might be really nice to give users the entire JSON payload of a full serialized model, now we're living in a world where that much information might be too much and it might overload the context window. So we're starting to design search experiences where the serialized data is a lot smaller so that the LLMs can perform faster queries and not overload their context windows. So that's it. Hopefully this was useful. And remember, Carpathy is watching. <laughs>